welcome to today's very exciting video! Today, we're gonna be talking about ARK's newest flyer that pretty much just made nearly every other flyer in the game irrelevant! The- ready, let's see if I can say this. The Trapeognathus! Also known as Tapahara 2.0. Let's get right into it, after a word from our sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Frag Pro Shooter, the best shooter game of 2020. Frag Pro Shooter is specifically designed for mobile devices with more than 30 million players. The rules of the game are simple. Destroy the enemy bunkers as quickly as possible. Once destroyed, you'll be able to access the tower and destroy it to win. How are we gonna do this though? Well, with our carefully crafted slick deck of characters, of course. There's more than 80 characters to collect, all of which are unique in their gameplay with a specific role and power. Compose these characters into a team of five, your deck, with your own strategy, be it attack, defense, camping. During the game, you control one character and the other four are controlled by the bot. You can switch when you want. Now, if you want to enhance the fun, there's now a 2v2 mode where you can invite a friend to play with you. You can control two characters in your deck and a friend or a random partner controls the other three to battle against two other players. So go check out Frag Pro Shooter by clicking the link in the description of my video. You'll get a nice starter kit containing one golden chest, 500 coins, and 50 diamonds. Worth six bucks. Do it now. Starting with taming! So how do you tame you a tape jar 2.0? Well, it's an easy enough but kind of annoying method. Your journey starts on the new Crystal Isles map in the Floating Islands area. The Tropiognathus is actually a passive tame. Sort of. The method for taming this guy is kind of annoying. You have to use chain bolas. Then once he's immobilized, you can feed him his preferred kibble, which is exceptional kibble, or fish if you don't mind lower effectiveness. But gee whiz, isn't it super annoying and complicated to tame one of these? Like sure, if you're later in the game, you could use maybe a quetz to launch chain bolas, or even a tech skiff if you're late, late game. But that's stupid and impractical. Actually, this can be done fairly easily. You see, normally the Tropiognathus is passive, unless he's provoked. So literally all you need to do is give him a little love tap and kite it into a trap, then you can easily tame it from the comfort of your base or wherever you choose to do this. Awesome! You've tamed yourself a Tropiognathus! Now what can you do with it? Ho ho ho! A whole lot! The Tropiognathus is truly a game changer! And you'll see why. So first of all, you've got a cute little left-click bite attack. Uh, who cares? That's not what we're here for. Let's talk about the special powers unlocked once you craft the saddle, which is craftable at level 65, by the way. So le let's call this mid-game. This is so cool. You'll notice a couple little icons at the bottom of your screen. A grenade and a gasoline icon. What's that mean? Well, I'm sure you can guess what that means. It means stuff grenades and gas in its inventory. Now, if you hit control, you activate boost mode! This increases your speed, but also gives you a few more abilities. Hold shift to activate mega boost mode! You also have the option to shoot grenades while in boost mode. Press right mouse button. It's questionable how effective this will be, practically speaking, but we'll test this more in depth later into the video, along with the speed, so stick around till the end. Now, if you double tap space, you have a harmless knockback attack, a lot like a wyvern. This has a huge cooldown, so you really can't spam it. Next, if you press C while in boost mode, you can do this crazy aerial maneuver, which makes for an excellent dodge, but also allows you to turn on a dime and gives you a very quick speed boost. Speaking of speed, that gauge at the bottom of your screen isn't like fuel consumption or something. It's just an arbitrary speed gauge. If you basically dive bomb while in hyper boost, you can achieve maximum speed. This is cool, but I question how useful it is. It's not like a griffin where you can glide and maintain that top speed for a while. The dive bomb basically just lets you get to the ground super ultra fast. Now there's an additional ability, which is a weird one, while you're in boost mode. It's called drafting. Sometimes you'll get an icon at the bottom of your screen indicating that it's available. It's another way to achieve top speed. You hold spacebar to begin drafting when available. Oddly enough, this doesn't look like something you can just use in any kind of reliable 
predictable way. It appears to only work in certain small areas around the Crystal Isle map. You can see when I'm flying around this specific small area, my drafting is available. Once I leave, it's gone. Very strange. I'm kind of disappointed this can't be used more reliably. Did you realize certain things about the Tropiognathus is a uh, copy-paste from the Tapahara? It's literally got the same sounds, and the animation and way it handles is basically the same. I'm pretty shocked Wildcard put all this effort into the Tropiognathus, then couldn't be bothered to give it unique sounds. That's why I called it Tapahara 2.0, because it's basically the same dino, but better. Oh, and by the way, one of the things that makes this guy awesome is that you can pretty much fly in boost mode 24-7 because fuel consumption is very low. So don't worry about limiting how long you're in boost mode. What you really need to watch out for, though, is stamina consumption. Because while you're boosting, you're also still using stamina. A good compromise if you're just trying to travel really long distances is just to keep boost mode active and just hold the W key staying out of hyper boost mode, but still boosting at quite a respectable speed. Let's go more in depth now and see exactly what this bad boy is capable of and where he fits into the meta. Okay, so you know I always love to test the damage numbers on these things, and our new friend here has some unique abilities, so we have to see what kind of damage can we do to various structures, how much and how does it scale. So you can see that we have a line of literally every single structure, and our standard damage testing creature, the T-Rex, which is not armored anywhere on its body and takes the same damage anywhere you hit it, making it good for testing raw numbers. So let's see what we can damage. Can we damage a greenhouse? Yeah, of course we can. We do decent damage, 177 damage per shot. How about wood? 177 again. Now remember, we also get splash damage. With adobe structures, we do enhanced damage. That's 413 damage per shot on adobe, but the same applies also to stone. Now here's the big question. Can this thing damage metal? You would think not, but you would be surprised because yes, we can damage metal. 53 damage per shot. Not a huge amount of damage, but the fact that we can do anything at all is crazy. You can even damage tech, even though it's abysmally low damage where it wouldn't really matter and you'd never use it, but that's pretty awesome that we can even do that at all. So for our flesh target, it's kind of inconsistent, but with a direct good quality hit, you're usually going to get in the ballpark of around 225 damage. Not bad. I mean, the splash damage is kind of really the selling point. The normal left click bite attack is pretty weak and pathetic. What you're seeing here is with every single attack point pumped into melee, and I would not recommend ever using this because it's pretty bad. This was also to test and see if damage scales on the cannon with more melee. Like the more melee you pump into it, do you do more damage on the cannon? And the answer was no. The damage is fixed no matter what. Even if you put a higher quality sound that was another thing I tested. Does it increase the damage? And the answer is no. It's a fixed amount of damage, period. Now, one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that with our new friend, you also actually have the ability to pick up small creatures and enemy players. However, this ability is kind of gimped compared to other flyers like the Argent, for example, because there's that random chance meter for your enemy who you just picked up to escape. It works exactly the same as the Bog Spider's grapple mechanic. If you don't understand how that works and the best way to get away from that, I suggest you go check out my Bog Spider video where I explain that in depth. Now, you can only pick up very small creatures and players. Next, let's talk about speed, because I'm sure everyone is wondering, how fast is this thing? I mean, it's literally got a jet booster on its back. I mean, it's got to be the fastest creature in the game, right? Well, we tested it, and I'm going to tell you right now. So, we raced the Tropiognathus against what is considered some of the, if not the fastest flyers in the game. Starting with the Griffin, it was actually fairly close. However, the Tropiognathus typically was a little bit faster than the Griffin. Against a Frost Owl, not even close, the Frost Owl gets smoked 
against a pterodactyl, not even close again. The Tropiognathus just obliterates it, not even close, especially with the drafting ability. It's it's pretty sad. Against a wyvern, again, not even close. You get smoked. So I think I can pretty safely say the Tropiognathus is the winner. It's the champion. It is now the fastest flyer in the entire game, period. This is truly going to change the meta, period. Now on leveling, after doing some enhanced testing, I have to tell you, first of all, don't waste your points by leveling melee. It's a huge waste. You're never going to be using the bite attack unless you want to try picking players off of their teams. But then with that random chance meter that they can quickly get out of, because if you know how to get out of it, it's very fast to get out of. It's kind of a mediocre attack option. This guy is going to be primarily used for his incredible speed and his ability to hit and run with his projectiles. So really what you're going to want to be leveling is HP and stamina. Now here's the deal on that. The Tropiognathus levels HP quite well, actually. However, he levels stamina and weight pretty mediocre. Melee is meh, but again, you don't want to level that. So yeah, dump your points into melee, stamina, a little bit of weight, and you'll be good to go. And that's everything you need to know about the Tropiognathus. So hard to say. Do you want me to go back and cover older dinos? Let me know in the comments below.